Let's solve this challenging algebra problem. We have an isosceles triangle with a base length of 10 and a height of 8. And we have an inscribed rectangle with dimensions x by y. We want to find the largest possible area of the inscribed rectangle. If you want to try this out yourself, my hints are to use similar triangles and to write an expression for the area of the rectangle, and then recall that the maximum point on a downwards facing parabola is the vertex. This is a sort of problem you would encounter in calculus, but just with some geometry and algebra, we're going to be able to solve this without calculus. Like I hinted at, we'll begin with similar triangles. Looking at our picture here, there are a few similar triangles. The one that we're going to focus on are this one here, this triangle in the corner with a height of y, and this sort of half of the isosceles triangle with a height of 8. Here's what those look like. We know that they are similar because they share this angle here in the bottom corner, and then we also know that this angle is congruent to this angle because we have parallel lines being cut by a transversal, so those are corresponding angles. And I should mention, we know that these lines are parallel because this is a rectangle with its base lying on the inscribed triangle. That means this base of the rectangle is parallel to this part of the rectangle, and thus this perpendicular to the base of the triangle is perpendicular to the so-called bases of the rectangle. If it's perpendicular to those bases of the rectangle, then it must be parallel to these sides of the rectangle. A couple other things we should justify about our similar triangle picture. We know the triangles are similar. How do we know that this base of the big triangle is actually half the base of the larger isosceles triangle? Well, it's pretty easy to see that these two halves are indeed congruent. We can use angle, angle, side to see that. By the isosceles triangle theorem, this angle is congruent to this one. This is a perpendicular because it's the height, and so this angle is congruent to this one. And then, of course, both halves share this side. So they are congruent by angle-angle side, so the perpendicular did cut the isosceles in half. So this base is half of the total base. That's how we know it's 5. Now, how do we know the base of this smaller triangle is 5 minus half x? Well, that's because it's this distance minus this distance. This distance we just showed is 5. As for this distance, which is half the base of the rectangle, we know that's half the total base of the rectangle because this triangle up here, this little one, must be similar to the big triangle. So if this perpendicular cuts the big triangle in half, it also cuts this small triangle in half, which means this piece is congruent to this piece, so indeed this guy here is half x. So this distance is 5 minus half x. Now we can really get on with the algebra. Because these triangles are similar and we know what their dimensions are, we know that 8 to 5, the ratio of the height to the base, must be equal to y to 5 minus half x, the ratio of the height to the base, because they are similar triangles. So 8 to 5 equals y over 5 minus half x. Now, we can solve this equation for y by multiplying both sides by 5 minus half x. 8 fifths times 5 is 8, and 8 fifths times minus half x is minus 4 fifths x. So we've now expressed y in terms of x. This is useful because, remember, we're trying to maximize the area of this inscribed rectangle, and we can express that area as xy. That's base times height. That's a little bit difficult to work with, though, because it has two variables, x and y. But now we know what y is in terms of x. So the area we're trying to maximize is xy, but we know y is 8 minus 4 fifths x. So the area is x times 8 minus 4 fifths x. Distributing the x and putting the squared term first, we have minus 4 fifths x squared plus 8x. 
The question then is where is this taking on its maximum value, this area of the inscribed rectangle? That's actually a pretty easy question to answer because you should notice this is a quadratic function where the leading coefficient is negative, which means its graph is a downwards facing parabola and the maximum of a downwards facing parabola is at the vertex. And there is a simple formula to find the vertex. The maximum value of a downwards facing parabola, if we were to write it like this, where a again is negative because it's a downwards facing parabola, just like our example here, the maximum is at the vertex, where x equals negative b over 2a. So we just have to apply that to our situation, negative 8 over 2 times a, that leading coefficient. And there it is. Our maximum area will occur at the vertex where x is negative b, that's 8, the coefficient of the linear term, divided by 2a. a is negative 4 fifths, so 2a is negative 8 fifths. If we evaluate this, we get 40 over 8, which equals 5. So the base of our rectangle to maximize the area should be 5. Finally, don't forget the question is about the maximum area. We just found the base. So the maximum area, x times y, is 5 times 8 minus 4 fifths x, which is 8 minus 4 fifths of 5, and that's just 5 times 4, or 20. That's the maximum possible area of this inscribed rectangle. And you might notice that the area of the isosceles triangle, one half base times height, is one half of 10, so five, times the height of eight, so 40. Okay, so the maximum area of the inscribed rectangle is actually half the area of the isosceles triangle. That's a pretty cool result. So here's a challenge problem you can try on your own, just like what we did, but a little bit more general. If you have an isosceles triangle with a base B and a height H, and an inscribed rectangle with a base X and a height Y, show that the ratio of the largest possible area of the inscribed rectangle to the area of the isosceles triangle is one to two. The maximum area of the inscribed rectangle is half the area of the triangle. And you can check the description for a link to my lesson going over this more general challenge problem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Algebra 2 course and Algebra 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh. I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus Finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter the rapidest Happens like this, my lectures the most prominent, dominant Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together Like any time that we intersect, cause my opponent